Up next, we've got full coverage of the spring football game, including the fanfare, and highlights from this past weekend's baseball series. You're watching the Beaver Sports Show on KBVR-TV. Stay tuned. Welcome to tonight's episode of the Beaver Sports Show. I'm your host, as always, Audrey Wiltz, and alongside me, as always, Jacob Noakes, Alex Crawford. How are you both doing? I'm doing great. My Celtics finally got a win. We only need three more. Yeah, I, I, yeah I'm not a fan of the Lakers, so NBA playoffs are here, and yeah, it's, all right. great. it's great. Let's not talk about the Lakers anymore. Um, on another note, we've got a great roundtable coming up later on in the show. Um, but first, Brooke Chrysler got out to the third game of the baseball series this past weekend, and here's some highlights from her. After dropping two out of the three games to the Washington Huskies last weekend, the number five ranked Beavers were happy to be back home to host the USC Trojans. Ben Wetzler pitched eight strong innings, only allowing one run on 101 pitches. The Beavers' offense was sparked by Tyler Smith, Andy Peterson, Michael Conforto, and Dylan Davis. The Beavers had a great weekend on both sides of the ball, sweeping the USC Trojans three games to none. Over the three games, the Beavers scored 19 runs while only allowing USC to score five runs. Pat Casey was thrilled by his performance, saying, That was a great weekend for us. We had three great outings for our starting staff, and our offense was excellent. The Beavers are back to it on Mom's Weekend, hosting the Cow Bears at Goss Stadium. With the Beaver Sports Show, this is Brooke Chrysler. Back to you in the studio. Great to see the baseball team back on track this weekend with a sweep. Um, as always, our trivia crew was out on campus asking all the tough questions. Take it away, guys. What's up, Beaver Nation? My name is Mary Johnson here at the MU Quad filming Beaver Trivia, so let's go find some people. All right, Drew, first question. What seven sports are being played this spring term? Baseball, softball, track, I don't know the rest. Baseball, softball, track and field, golf. Uh, <laughs> uh, baseball, softball, golf, rowing, and track and field. Well done, well done. How many Beaver football players were drafted in last week's NFL draft, and who were they? Two. It was uh, Marcus Wheaton and Jordan Poyer. Two. And it was Marcus Wheaton and Jordan Poyer. Uh, two. Wheaton and Poyer. How many Beavers are currently in the NFL? 25. 27. 69. Nope, 27. What is the softball team's current record? I don't know. Oh, it's Couldn't pretty good. I don't know. I don't know the exact number. And last question, what is the softball team's current record? Uh, 6 and 9, I think. 30 and 17. Well, that's it. I'm Mary Johnson. Back to you in the studio. This past Friday, Kimberly Parkin and Brett Held got all of the coverage at the fanfare as well as hit the sidelines for some highlights of the spring football game. Take it away. Hey guys, Britt and Kim here. The 2013 spring football game is now underway. The crowd is loud and the DJ's out playing, so check out what we saw tonight. And now you've had a look at all the activities tonight from the spring game. Tune in next week for more updates from Kim and I. We're going to take a quick commercial break, but coming up we've got everybody's favorite segment, the Beaver Roundtable, so stay tuned.
All right, and we're back, like I said, with everybody's favorite segment. I know your guys' favorite, favorite segment, excuse me, the Beaver Roundtable. Uh, first question we're going to ask, not only was the spring game this past weekend, but the NFL draft was, and it was a big one for the Beavers. Um, we're losing two of, you know, Beaver Nation's favorites, Jordan Poyer and Marcus Wheaton, but it's a great thing that we're losing them because they, they made it, you know. It's, it's really good to see them go. Um, Wheaton to the Steelers, Poyer to the Eagles. Now, my question for you guys is which one, respectively, is a better fit for their teams? What do you think, Jacob? Well, I think they're both great fits for their teams. I'm going to say Wheaton is going to be the better fit. Um, he has a veteran quarterback in Roethlisberger, and uh, Steelers just lost one of their top wide receivers in Mike Wallace. So he might jump in as a rookie and play right away. And then also Poyer, he went seventh round, so getting him in the seventh round is a total steal. Uh, it's ironic he got drafted by Chip Kelly. I mean, he's seen him throughout his whole entire college career, four years into college, so he knows a lot about his game. So I think he'll play, but he's going to take a couple of years to develop under Chip's system. So I think instant impact is going to be Marcus Wheaton. Yeah, I find it hard to disagree with you there. I mean, if you look at who Chip Kelly drafted, though, like you just said, he took four Pac-12 guys, five guys he played against. He also took an LSU player. You know, Oregon played them. So he knows what he's getting. NFLmocks.com called Jordan Poyer the best pick of the whole draft. You know, he's a second round, third round value, a guy that's going to be a starting corner at some point. Getting him in the seventh round was huge. But I do agree with you. Overall, immediate impact, that's going to be Marcus Wheaton. First of all, you know, Mike Wallace is gone. Second of all, the Steelers slot guy, Emmanuel Sanders, he's never developed into the guy they thought he could be. He only had 626 yards, one TD last year. He's always injured. He's dropping the ball. Honestly, the guy's been kind of a bust, and I would not be surprised if come training camp, come preseason, Marcus Wheaton's getting his fair share of reps. And, you know, if you're in a deep fantasy football league, I know it's a little bit early, but Marcus Wheaton would not be a bad sleeper pick. I think he's going to shine in the NFL, so I have to agree with you. I think media impact, you've got to go Marcus Wheaton. Yeah, I think it's great to see them go um, definitely in the draft, as well as a couple of free agents from, or a handful of free agents from Oregon State, Marcus Perry, Colin Kelly, um, you know, it's been great to see them kind of get picked up. In different yeah, they'll get their too. shots, you know. I know. It's cool to see them move on, and it'll be definitely great to, you know, talk to them when they come back and visit campus. Yes. So. Let's um, get them on the show. Yeah, we should. We should get them on. Um, the track and field, we're going we're gonna to switch gears a little okay. bit. Um, track and field team had a meet this past weekend, um, and we recently, you know, with the, with the track being built on this campus again, this is the first time this season we've had home meets, well, not this past weekend, but this season marks 25 years since yeah. we've had a track yeah, yeah, yeah. meet on it's this It's been campus. a long it's time. It's been a long, long time. It's been time. too long, actually. So. You know, like, what do you guys think of this program and how it's come such a long way to have a track team start, you know, being a part of this campus again as a, as a sports team and, and a part of the whole, like, you know, athletics program? Oh, yeah. Well, obviously, it's come a very long way. I mean, you go from having no team at all to now you've got a women's team, and you're, you're seeing football players get in there with, you know. Some the sprints. Four, yeah, some sprints, then. some, yeah. you know. Obum Guachum on the high jump. Right. But this, this program still has a long way to go. They're going to they're gonna keep expanding the complex. They're going to add more grandstands. They're going to make it more of a, you know, well, it's hard to compare it down to Hayward Field and Eugene because that's right. kind of the mecca for college track and field. But, they, but they're going to make it more of a place to go watch a track meet. In addition, you know, they've, they've still got to get a men's cross country team. They've still got to get a full men's track team. So while they've come a long way, there's still a long way to go. If you talk to head coach Kelly Sullivan, he'll tell you the same thing. So, I mean, it's a big step, but there's still a lot more steps. Props to them, though, for, you, you know, going in the right direction. Right. I think the track looks fantastic. I remember um, this past summer when it first came out, I was kind of, like, running on it before everybody got out there. I got my own workout in, which yeah. is great. And it's, um, it's just nice. It's a good overall field to kind of um, spread the program out and give people a different feel for athletics. So. And like Crawford said, this should help build more teams, and also it should help our recruiting with track. And uh, I just wanted to congratulate Kinsey Gomez and Emily Weber for finishing first and second in the 1500 last weekend, and also to Michelle Turney, who won her third triple jump of the year. So just congrats to them. Yeah, I think they had a good meet this past weekend. Yeah. Yes. Well, and it takes time to build a program, too. You know, you see those little baby steps. Yeah. But baby the new, steps. New track, new complex. Mm -hmm. That should definitely help things out. Right. Good. 
Um, my third question for you guys, it's been kind of the talk. I've seen some conversations on Twitter, um, a couple different articles from local news stations that have written about it. Um, Ahmad Starks, I know this is off season, we're going to talk about basketball for a second. Um, rumor has it that Ahmad Starks, and I think it's true, yeah, true, it's true rumor, it's true. that he's heading out of here. He's not going to be um, with the Oregon State men's basketball team anymore um, due to some family illnesses. He wants to kind of be closer to his grandma is what I've, what I've understood, um, but still definitely take a strong, um, you know, still play basketball, still play the game yeah. that he loves. And so what do you guys think this is going to do for our program? I think it's really disappointing. Like, if I want to relate it to the NBA, he's kind of the Rajon Rondo of the Celtics, but can shoot threes. You would talk about the Celtics. I know. I'm sorry. I had to <laughs> Dude, that's a, that that's in, a but, stretch, but continue. But um, it was a down season for the Beavs, obviously, in basketball. And losing your top-tier point guard, I mean, it's just going to hurt us more. So I don't, look, I don't like our future for boys basketball now looking at it well let me okay I'm gonna disagree with you but let me preface it by saying that I love Ahmad Stark Ahmad Starks he's a great guy he's the all-time Oregon State leader in three-pointers made he's a good player obviously and he'll have success wherever he goes I don't think it hurts the Beavers that much to lose him he's an undersized guard he's a defensive liability you get a younger guy in there Victor Robbins Langston Morris Walker maybe one of the freshmen that's you know the new freshman that'll be coming in uh, yes you lose something you lose, you lose a veteran he was a shooter uh, they're going to double-team Roberto Nelson. He's not going to be able to get as many points as he got this year. But defensively, I think it helps the Beavers. I think it gives the younger guys a chance to play. I think it kind of gets the rotation moving a little bit more. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remain optimistic, and I'm going to say overall the Beavers will not be hurt that much by it. Obviously, it's impossible not to be hurt when you lose a guy, your starting point guard. But, you know, Charlie Barton was starting to uh, take the starter's role at the end of the season. He's more of a pure point guard, pass first point guard. So, you know, I got to say it doesn't hurt the Beavers that bad. I would argue, though, that uh, he's one of the only guys on the uh, team that can create his own shot. That's so true. That's, that's going to hurt us. He does. I mean, he was like a weapon when our offense was down. He was a scorer to go to. And streaky. Stre I mean, any, any shooter is streaky, but, you know, sometimes those shots were, were a bit ill-advised. And I don't know, I, if, you, if you picked up the barometer this week, there was a good – the players gave some pretty candid quotes saying, you know, Basically, Victor Robin said, yo, I can play defense, I can step up, I can be the guy. Is, is he maybe talking a big game? Yeah, we'll see if he backs it up or not. But at least he's confident. We'll see what happens. I don't think the Beavers are hurt that bad overall. By the, by the end of next season, they won't be saying, wow, we miss some odd Starks. All right. Well, I guess we'll, wait. we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, we'll have to wait a whole year. So. <laughs> Well, we're almost finished up tonight, but um, Jake McGrady is going to give us the outlook for this upcoming weekend's Away Sports. Take it away, Jake. Hi, Beaver Nation. I'm Jake McGrady. It was a slow week in Beaver Away Sports, but let's get into the following games in the next week. Tune in Friday, May 3rd, as Oregon State softball team takes on the Ducks in Eugene for a three-game series that goes through Sunday, May 5th. Men's golfers David Fink and Brian Jung are tied for six overall in the Pac-12 championships at the Los Angeles Country Club. That's it for today. Back to you guys. All right. Thanks, Jake. That's all we have for you tonight, but make sure to tune in next week for another edition of the Beaver Sports Show. Have a good night.